from Dublin to Cleveland Production. Hello and welcome to From Dublin to Cleveland. I'm Logan Howard. I am joined today by Brendan Thomas Merritt and Katie Schrock. How are you guys doing today? Uh, we'll start with Brendan and then we'll we'll go to Katie. So how's it going, Brendan? How are you doing today? I am in absolute shock. That must be the only time I've ever heard the word production pronounced pro-duction. <laughs> I'm like, that is not how you pronounce the O, people. <laughs> that intro was not Brendan Thomas Marrett approved. <laughs> Peek behind the curtain on that one. I literally, so I was the one who did the voiceover, of course, and I'm doing it, and I realized that I had extra time, and I'm like, I need to, like, extenuate this last word. <laughs> so that's what I did. Uh, so, yeah, that... that, that, that was... Then you go, production. <laughs> That's no excuse to mispronounce the O. <laughs> How about you, Katie? How are you doing today? I'm good. Good, good. The sun is shining and the snow is melting, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's good. That's always good in Canada. Um, here's my first question for both of you. This is not a part of the game yet, but how do you pronounce blueberries? Because I heard a very strange pronunciation from uh, the people across the pond. Not the Irish people, but the the United Kingdom people. Um, so they can't speak their own language. I wouldn't pay much attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> they think think is pronounced think. For goodness sakes. <laughs> blueberries. Good. Yeah. There's only one way. Blueberries. I, I know. Yes. Apparently people, I was I was watching this, this British people uh, play these board games or whatever, and they call it blueberries. And I was yeah. like, what? Oh, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. yeah. That was a new one for me. So then they called it strawberries and then they called it raspberries. And I was like, this is berry. The word is berry. It has always been berry. <laughs> no, but it's the same. Um, and again, British pronunciation, you don't have a daughter. Or as you guys say, a daughter. It's a daughter. <laughs> or, you know, you would imagine the correct pronunciation of what you put in your bread is butter. Or because Irish people aren't great with strong teas, butter. But to the British, it's butter. <laughs> so yeah, they they have a what's called a schwa, which they use very very liberally in their pronunciation. Uh, but to me, it's just absolutely ridiculous in, in words like blueberries. <laughs> yeah. No offense to any Brits listening. We're so grateful for the views. Give us a like and send to your friends. As far as I can tell, they don't watch us anymore. So that's my case. It's all the way. <laughs> all right. So anyway, what we're doing today is we are playing Bible trivia game. So I'm going to read off a question <laughs> that is something like, where did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego end up in? And they will answer Fiery Furnace or um, Fiery on. Dump Dirt or some, <laughs> something of those answers. Um, so we'll see how many points we're going to try to do, th go through 21, see how that goes. There's going to be seven categories. Oh, no. Um, so there'll be old Testament history, geography, prophets and prophecy names, letters, uh, numbers and sequences. So that's all together. New Testament and then wisdom will be the last group. So I will explain what group this is before we, I ask the question. So that their brains can be working on what it is, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good time, and uh, you'll get them all right, because of course, it's the Bible, we'll get them all right. Anyway, uh, first question, Old Testament. Um, who in the Old Testament had a dream of 14 cows coming out of a river? So they're writing down their names correctly. Uh, we'll go with... Brendan looks, he looks confident. <laughs> that would be my boy, Joseph. Katie, what you have? I'm pretty sure it's Pharaoh. <gasps> oh, dang it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a point to Katie. Pharaoh's absolutely right. <laughs> Brendan got the correct time period and the correct person who interpreted the dream, unfortunately. 
Unfortunately, it was not the first to dream. I got too excited. Forgive me. <laughs> We're gonna change this game to a dream that dream. <laughs> uh, Alright, second one. History and geography. What did Moses show to Moses just before he died? Uh, just before he died, but did not allow him to enter. <laughs> I was just lulling Kate to the full sense of security. <laughs> okay, so assuming that was not a trick question, but you actually meant to ask what to God show, Moses, that would be the promised land. Oh yeah, that is the same answer that I have written down. Yeah. Alright, cool. Promised land is the absolute correct answer. Good job. Alright, new question. Is, this one I believe is Prophets and Prophecy. Yep. Um, what man in the Bible was asked to remove his shoes by a voice from a burning bush? Mm. All right, we'll go to Katie this time first. What, what do you got, Katie? Well, I have uh, Moses. Moses. All right. Brendan, what do you have? Very same. Moses. Absolutely right. Good job. Two points. One point for each of you. All right. Uh, next one. Name the mother of Joseph who ruled in Egypt. Seems like it's worded as a trick question, but name the mother of Joseph who ruled in Egypt. What's her name? taking his time on this one. <laughs> I'm trying to work out what the question means. It's kind of I'm looking for a name, so I'm looking for the mother of, Jay of Joseph, who ruled in Egypt. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> The relative pronoun threw me off. I was like, is that like, you know, who or like comma who? That's like easy peasy and squeezy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> All right. Katie had it in first. Uh, Rachel. Rachel. Okay. No, that's the wrong name. Okay, what did you have, Brendan? <laughs> I had Rachel, but she's after throwing me, and now I'm thinking it's Rebecca, but I wrote Rachel. It's Rachel. It is, you yeah. You both right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No need to Good job. Yeah, Rebecca was married to Isaac, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think of a, of a queen of Egypt with a son called Joseph. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, alright. So I was just like pretending I was writing like a really long answer in, total, in real life, but I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> alright, so this one. Uh, this is the letters, numbers, and sequences. On which number of the seven days of creation did God create all living things uh, and beasts of the earth and man? Seven day of creation. What's that? Uh -huh. All right. Uh, Brendan, what is your answer? Day six. Animals, six. man, woman, marriage. Day six. Day six, you guys are right. Good job. Good job. All right. Um, next one. Uh, what did Paul, or otherwise known as Saul, do while Stephen was being stoned? Uh, 
Yeah. He stood by giving approval to the death and, like, watching over the coats. Okay. Katie? I wrote that he stood by and held coats for people. Held coats, stood by, absolutely right answer. Good job. <laughs> All right. Um, who said the following? Behold, I stand at the door and will knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. Who said? Found a clause. <laughs> I know that it's not my final answer. <laughs> Postman. <laughs> Betty, who you invited over for tea. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, what do you got, Brendan? <laughs> One Jesus Emmanuel Christ. So, after the first round, we have Katie's at seven, Brendan's at six. All right. Something right. very wrong with that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice how I've curved my emotions and zeal since the first question? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to Old Testament, the Old Testament question. Uh, which brother did Joseph tell his brothers to bring back to Egypt from Canaan to prove that they weren't spies? Sorry, ask that question again? Sure. Uh, which brother did Joseph tell yeah. his brothers to oh. bring back to Egypt from Canaan to prove that they weren't spies? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. As I'll ever be. All right, Katie, we'll go with you first. Uh, Benjamin. Benjamin. Brendan, what do you have? Benjamin the Wolf, that's it. Benjamin, good job. All right. Next question. Uh, who brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem? History and geography. Who brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem? <laughs> it's like turn down the emotions think it through <laughs> it's like Joseph the dreamer <laughs> alright Brandon what do you got <clears throat> a David uh, accompanied by a parade of Israelites involving dancing for which he was rebuked right. what do you have Katie I have written only David. David. Well, That's all. I'm, I'm going to give it. It's David. Hey, David's the right answer. So I'm going to give it to both of you. All right. Um, so this one is prophets and prophecy. Uh, what was the chariot made of which appeared from heaven just before Elijah was taken into heaven? So what was that chariot made of? same. Fire. Absolutely right. Good job. All right. Uh, next one is um, whose hair was shaved off by the Philistines? It was Jeroboam. <laughs> ah, he was a class man, wasn't he? All right, Brendan, what do you got? Samson. of royal blood did Solomon have? Um, I got a 
I'll give you some options here. So how many wives of royal blood did Solomon have? Zero, one, two, seven hundred, or a thousand. Seven hundred wives, but then he had like an additional, additional like concubines on top of that. Yeah. Okay, seven hundred. Uh, what do you have, Katie? I've also written seven hundred. Seven hundred is the absolute correct answer. Yeah, Happy days. days. Well, the best. Uh, right. Um, next one here. Uh, which disciple put his finger in Jesus's nail prints and said, "My Lord and my God." Doubting Thomas. Thomas. Katie, what do you have? Thomas. Thomas. Alright, good job. Um, last one for this round. What, so this is wisdom, what is the word for the king, for the kind, sorry, let me start over here. <laughs> what is the word for the kind of person who says lying is bad, but lies himself? Person who says lying is bad but lies himself. All right, everybody ready with their answer? Yep. All right, Brandon, go ahead. Okay, the literal word be hypocrite, but uh, because it's the proverbs, as you imagine, it's fool. <laughs> so is your official answer fool? It's what I've written down, yeah. <laughs> Andy, what do you have? Well, I wrote both fool and hypocrites. Were we allowed to write multiple options? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I was trying to decide. I was thinking about the fool is hypocrite. The answer is hypocrite. So, I believe Katie gets a point, and I don't think Brendan had it written down. Even though he said it out loud, and I'm not sure you should get a point, I'll let Katie decide. Did that mean that I could write multiple answers to every question? <laughs> kind of quiz is this <laughs> well all right you know we'll stretch the limits here just to make it interesting we'll give him a point anyway here's how it stands so far katie 14 brendan 13 on to the last round of questions uh what was one thing this is old testament what was one thing god told adam he must not do in the garden of eden Eat the fruits of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I like the short answer to that. Thank you. <laughs> Katie? Um, eat the fruit growing on the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. But I didn't have time to write it all down. So. Nah, you're okay. That's good. That, that's enough. Uh, all they wanted was eat forbidden fruit. Um, but you guys went above and beyond for that one. Uh, next one. Uh, history and geography. To what mountain did Moses go to receive the Ten Commandments from God? What mountain did he go? It's the Mount of Olives, of course. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Katie, you have your answer ready. Yes, he went to Sinai. Uh, yeah, Mount Sinai, which is also called Mount Horeb. Two names, one mountain. Nice. All right. Um, number three. This is prophets and prophecy. What?
What did Belshazzar see on the wall? What did Belshazzar see on the wall? A handwriting weighed, measured, divided. Shot. Katie? I just wrote a handwriting. Mm. Yep, you guys both got it. Brendan just went above and beyond on that one. It's almost All like right. he deserves an extra point. <laughs> Since this quiz seems to have no rules. <laughs> yeah, but that first question. <laughs> This is names. What person is the most famous for patience in the Bible? Who is the most famous for patience in the Bible? To be honest, I would not have guessed this answer. I don't know who that is. I assume we're talking about, like, you know, just 100% human, like, not Jesus, yeah. <laughs> um, I can neither confirm nor deny that theory. Okay. Because usually when you're doing a quiz and people are like, you know, you're the most humble man in the world, Moses. And then you're like, and then Jesus came along. But I assume we're talking about only people here. Okay. Yeah, all, I, all I'm asking for is a name, so. If they have a name, then they can be written down. All right, fair enough. Ready with your answers. Mm -hmm. Most famous person for patience in the Bible. Brendan, what's your answer? <laughs> well, I'm assuming it's not Jesus. Um, although, since we can have multiple answers, maybe it is. Um, I don't know. I'm going to write down, like, you know, Enoch. Because I know, obviously, he was a prophet. Um, and virtually all the world had turned against the Lord while he was running around prophesying. Until eventually the Lord just raptured him away. Okay. Uh, Katie, what do you have? Um, I wrote down Lot. Lot. Okay. Sure. Well, I don't know where they're getting this from, <laughs> but it's Job. Oh, I almost wrote that down. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the answer was Job. I'm not sure why, because I feel like there is some... Is that more of like the idiom, like you've got the patience of Job? More, more like the expression? Oh, more, oh, so Christianese rather than just biblical. Well, this has no rules. <laughs> there might be a verse too. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so well, there you go. Like in their Bibles now. No, uh, no perfect score today, unfortunately. Uh, we don't also have perfect next... questions or perfect quiz master. <laughs> this is what we're on top of the judging. We have letters, numbers, and sequence. Uh, of the ten lepers Jesus cured, how many returned to thank him? So Jesus cured ten lepers, how many came back? Second. left. Who in who said the following? My kingdom is not of this world. Uh, Brandon. 
Jesus Christ. Jesus, indeed. Jesus. Jesus. All right. Here we go for the last question. I guess if it, if guess if, if Brendan's able to get this right, Katie gets it wrong. I'll have one more question for you. But otherwise, Katie wins this one. Uh, Jesus said uh, that it was more difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for what kind of an animal to go through the eye of a needle. <clears throat> that would be the Desert Bloom Camel. <laughs> camel. Katie. A camel. Camel. Absolutely right. Good job. Katie is our winner with 20 correct questions out of 21. Brendan has 19 out of 21. Uh, very good showing. Good job to both. I'm livid. In the spirit of camaraderie, get used to be well done. Fair, I've said my piece. <laughs> well, <laughs> we should probably quickly pivot into the God's Word, otherwise Brendan will slowly unravel. So, <laughs> well, the unraveling has begun. <laughs> uh, well, uh -huh. if anyone wants to send him an email to encourage him that you also thought Joseph was the correct answer, I didn't think it was the answer. He just names what in my head, and I just instinctively wrote it down. <laughs> if I thought about it a little bit longer, I would have been like, mm. uh, I'll <laughs> Anyway, we are in Psalms 31, verse 24, and it says, Be of good courage, and, you sh and he shall strengthen your heart and all you who hope in the Lord. Um, so I will say... Just how cool it is that uh, you can be encouraged mm -hmm. from uh, God's word, uh, from other people, from himself, um, uh, because he's going to strengthen us, he's going to take care of us, and all of our hope should be put into God. It shouldn't be put into other things, other people, um, because, you know, I am a testament to this, as are the two people in this room, that people will let us down, and mm -hmm. things will let us down, and stuff will deteriorate. But uh, if we hope in the Lord, he will take care of us and he'll walk us through um, things that we can't, uh, we can't get through on our own. So uh, I don't know which of you want to go next, but whoever wants to, go right ahead. Yep, ladies first, go for it. So my, my version is a little bit different. It says, be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. And that's kind of something I've been thinking about all week because work has been kind of chaotic and crazy. But I find like when I when I stop and like let my heart take courage in the Lord, then there's there's strength for whatever comes up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I think so often, you know, we and fall into anxiety or a great stress. And I'm not going to pretend life is easy. It isn't. But sometimes we need to remember that no matter how big the challenges that we're facing are, God is substantially bigger. I remember watching a DVD once called Indescribable by... <laughs> I'm going to butcher his surname. Um, Louis Gigliardo? I know people instantly say gigolo, I think that's something else. I think it's gigliardo, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> and he was showing how massive planet Earth is. And then showing how big solar systems are. And how big suns and other stars are and black holes. And then said, so imagine, since the Spirit of God takes up everywhere. I mean, you can't avoid it. You can't get away from it. How massive is God? And the most powerful agent of Satan does not come close to our God. And it was such an amazing experience for me watching this. And at the time I had been very moved um, by 
um, the most innocuous things into deep states of fear and genuine concern into states of paralysis. But all of a sudden I was like, wow, these demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Not when they see him, because most of them try to avoid him as much as they can. But the name of Jesus absolutely terrifies them. So therefore, who are we to be afraid? So yeah, so when we put our minds on the Lord and actively make the decision to choose courage, to choose to be strong, to choose boldness and bravery, not out of idiocy or lack of wisdom or forsaking godly advice, but with humility because we are very small, but seeing how God is very, very big. That he absolutely loves us and that he's absolutely good. It does our heart a lot of good and it helps reinforce and strengthen us um, in our inner man. Alright, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today and listening. Uh, thank you, Katie, for coming on. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Yes, no problem. We enjoyed it. Um, and for putting bread in this place, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> <laughs> Just you wait until the next time we do a quiz, Broski, and uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be quick to, you know, give you absolutely no pointers on the rules and what's allowed and what's okay and, you know, what what's expected and and we'll, we'll see who's laughing. I'm gonna wipe that smirk off your face. And again, Katie, I'm very happy for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Tune in next time when Brendan will be the host of <laughs> Bible Quiz. And we'll have to have Katie back on so she can, uh, she can continue her winning streak. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. We will see you all next week. Have a great and lovely day. Bye, friends. God bless, guys. <laughs>